uh, we have Mr. John Bolger. Uh, he's from he's a consultant ophthalmologist at My Eye Clinic, and he's going to be speaking on robotics in ophthalmology. Hello. Um, Yeah, here we go. Okay, um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, my experience with the robotic surgery in, in ophthalmology. And the way I see it is there are two sorts of robotics. There are robotics <clears throat> which help us, uh, thanks, which help us do what we can do already. And as you can see, as we've seen today, it can do it a lot better um, than, we, than we can. But the, still, the procedure could still be done by the, res the surgeon. Um, with smile laser eye surgery, it's really augmentation. The, um, the surgery can only be done by the robot. There's no human that could ever do a smile procedure. And I think this, this group, this um, group here, will grow as robotics gets more and more traction in, in, in medicine and in surgery. Femtosecond uh, is a, a type of laser where the pulse length is one millionth of a billionth of a second. Um, and uh, that is an important aspect to this uh, technology. And when lasers first came out, the, the power uh, increased and then was, didn't increase because at this level here, this shoulder here, the lasers were so powerful that they destroyed the machine that was generating them. And it was only when Donna Strickland uh, developed this what's chirped pulse am amplification that it was possible to develop um, lasers that could de deliver a far more energy per pulse. And she won the uh, Nobel Prize in physics in 2018, and she's one of the three women ever to get a Nobel Prize for physics. So with a um, uh, microsecond laser, you get a, a lot of destruction of tissue uh, around the, 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 the pulse uh, interface. With a femtosecond, it's much more localized. And you'll see why this level of precision is necessary for in, in ophthalmology, and certainly in the, in the management of myopia. The way it works is that they have an ultra-short, low-intensity pulse. It's then stretched in time into a longer pulse. It's then amplified, so it doesn't destroy the amplifier. And then it's con constricted, again, constricted again into a, a compressed but high-intensity pulse, giving us the, the, the properties that it does. Now, most people in this room are myopic. Uh, that's a fact. In other words, your, your, your lifestyle as a child was such that your eye grew too long. And your natural focus is about here in the middle of the vitreous. If you think of your cornea as a lens, it is a single lens, of course. But if we imagine it as a series of lenslets, um, we could just remove one or two of these to move the focus from here to here. And that's what Smile Laser t uh, does in, in, uh, in ophthalmology. Um, here is a, a, a a 3D representation of a cornea of a patient who's coming for laser eye surgery. Um, so the eye is too long, but you can also see that there's astigmatism. There's a steep axis and a flat axis. So we want to modify the cornea in two ways. We want to make it less powerful, and we want to get rid of the, um, the, the astigmatism as well. So we want a cornea afterwards to look like this, to be less powerful and to be flatter. So you can imagine there's quite a bit of technology brought to bear to, to do that. Um, now, this is the last type of slide you want to see on a 4 o'clock lecture on an afternoon. So let's zoom in on it. So what we're looking at here is, is a sort of the spreadsheet as well, the algorithm uh, results of, of the, the technology in the machine. So if we look at someone who's minus 6, which is a fairly average uh, degree of myopia that we would treat, we need to remove 79 microns from the cornea in the center and then blend it to the periphery. And if this patient has, say, three quarters of a diopter of astigmatism, we need to remove 89, another 10 microns on the steep axis. So if we translate that into this patient, we need to remove 79 microns of tissue from here to get rid of the myopia, the minus six, but we also want to remove an extra 10 microns fr from here. So you can imagine from this here to the 90 degree axis around here, there's a blend of 10 microns smoothly transitioned in between those two axes. Now you can, I hope you can see that there's no human could ever get close to this level of, of, uh, of uh, for finesse. So it is sub-micron in, in precision. 
So this is the, the robot. I mean, you can see it doesn't have arms or legs, uh, but this is the Carl Zeiss Visimax laser. And the laser is delivered through this portal here. And, and uh, I can observe if I want to, but I don't need to. In fact, I do nothing except push a, put, a foot pedal. Um, the patient is elevated to dock on this uh, cupping device, and low-grade suction um, holds the eye in place as the patient stares at the, the, the target. This is the treatment in real time. This is all it takes to get rid of minus six. This cut is the first cut. That determines the focus change. Then there's a ring cut, and then there's a cap cut on the, on the top. So you can imagine now in between, there's a, a lens, a lenslet, which you'll see, which is then removed through this. And that's, that's the treatment done. Um, at this point in the, in, the, in the procedure, this is a cross-section. This is an OCT image of the cornea that's just had that procedure done. And you can see here the plane of the first cut. And then in the periphery, there's the plane of the second cut around the, the uh, circumference. And then the cap cut, the top cut here. So this area here is the excess lenticule that's rendering this eye myopic and, and astigmatic. And uh, no blood on the next slide, but this is me removing this lenticule with a forceps. And you can see that how precise this has to be to put that eye into perfect focus without glasses. Uh, any, any sort of micron missing here or there and I, making sure that the lenticule is complete, it, it's, it, it's ineffective. And um, so this, uh, this is the lenticule on a swab after the procedure. And this is all it takes to make you minus six, um, which is really uh, it's so, so small as to be insignificant. Um, if, you, if you thought that the eye looked bad, this is, this is the eye about less than 24 hours later. And of course, the patient can read the whole chart unaided. And you can see it's uh, a quite a, a miraculously non-invasive. Um, and here is an OCT analysis preoperatively, and you can see the corneal thickness here. And here you can just make out, this is a week later, you can just make out the interface where the lenticule was removed, and you can see the, the thinned cornea um, uh, postoperatively. So I believe this is truly a robotic procedure that um, uh, in, the, in the sort of Star Trek sense, uh, no human could ever do this on their own. Um, uh, and, and, and I think it's very exciting because all the other technologies we've looked at will move into this zone. We will start being able to do things we couldn't possibly do um, today in 5, 10, 15, 20 years' time. Um, so Smile Laser, uh, which is small, uh, intra, uh, small lenticule extraction, uh, laser eye surgery is, uh, I believe, truly robotic. And like all the other surgeries we saw before, it changes lives. And it's actually safer than putting a daily soft contact lens on your cornea. Thank you very much for your attention.